Something super interesting happened in early 2025. Framer has finally caught up with Webflow in terms of popularity, at least according to Google Trends. Now, I personally love both tools, which is why we have in-depth courses for both in Flux Academy. So obviously one of the most common questions I get is which one is right for me? Now it did take a little while for both of these tools to mature so that we have clarity on what each of them does best. But I think that at this point, it's pretty clear. So in this video, I want to cover the key differences between these awesome web design tools and help you figure out which one is right for you. Now, quick note before we begin, I will be using some technical terms in this video to explain the differences. And if you're a beginner or have no web design background, that might sound like Chinese to you. And if that's the case, don't worry, because after I'll cover the differences, I'll get to the bottom line of what all of these things mean for you. So let's start by understanding how Webflow works. The vision of the Webflow team is to enable you to do everything that's possible with code, but without writing code. So the way Webflow works uses the same concepts of HTML and CSS, meaning you place divs and then you add classes and you have access to all of the properties of native CSS, like flex and grids, margins, paddings, even super niche properties like underlying style and thickness. And if they didn't create a button for your favorite CSS property, you can actually add custom properties which means that you can literally do anything. Now, on top of that, they've built the most powerful animation tool out there today. And last year they've purchased GSAP, which is one of the most popular animation libraries for the web, which now they're working on integrating into their animation engine. However, in pursuit of making Webflow the most powerful professional tool out there, there are quite a few buttons and options, and you basically have to learn how to think and add classes like a pro developer, which means that there is a bit of a learning curve to mastering Webflow. Let's talk about Framer. Framer team has a different vision. They want to make it easy for designers to build amazing websites. So they took a different approach. They've made Framer much closer to Figma in its design, meaning you don't really have to think about classes, but rather you have a more intuitive process of working with layers, something that people who might be familiar with other design software feel much more comfortable with, and it's a lot more intuitive. Both these tools have very robust CMS, and I would actually say that 70 or 80% of the websites that I see could have easily been built on both of these tools. So the question we need to ask is what kind of websites you can build on Webflow that you can't build on Framer? And I would say that the answer is two types of websites. One, websites that have very complex functionality, because while you can add custom code to a Framer website, because you're not creating classes and you don't have access to a specific element ID, creating advanced functionality is much more complicated on Framer rather than on Webflow. The second kind of websites is animation heavy websites like the one that you're seeing on awards. They are easier to build on Webflow because it has a more robust animation engine. So the bottom line is this, if you're interested in building super complex or animation heavy website, then Webflow is going to be your choice. But most web designers who are building the rest of the web, that is 80% of the project, not only can use Framer, but potentially they can get the job faster and easier using Framer. And here's another thing to consider. Webflow requires you to think like a developer, which is much more logical type of thinking, while Framer is much more intuitive. And I find that some people, for example, people who are coming from an engineering background, find Webflow easy, but for people who are coming from a non-technical background or a creative background, Webflow can feel overwhelming and they find Framer much easier. So the bottom line is, I think that you need to consider number one, what kind of person are you and which of these tools you're going to find easier and more fun to work on. And the second thing, what kind of projects you're going to be working on. And Sometimes my advice, especially if you're a beginner, is to just play around with both of these tools for a little bit and find out which one of them feels more natural to you. And of course, if you're joining our Web Career Ignite program, you will have access to both courses anyway, which is the best. So I hope that you've found this video helpful. And if you have other thoughts or questions, drop them in the comments below. See you on the next video.